These are handmade Lucky Charms. Yeah. How much should I charge per bowl? Five hundred dollars a bowl. That sounds like you're low volume. Yeah, totally. Ugh. Everything sucks. As Brad would say. Hi everyone, I'm Claire. We're in the BA Test Kitchen and today we're going to make Gourmet Lucky Charms. Before I say anything, we are going to eat all of these Lucky Charms. None of this will be wasted. I was not allowed to have sugar cereal as a kid, so Lucky Charms was a rare treat. It's been quite a while since I've had it and it's quite delicious, I have to say. So I have different kinds here. It's a chocolate variety, which I didn't know existed. Limited edition, which has all four leaf clovers in it. And then these bowls are just the classic marshmallow shapes. So there's hearts, stars, and horseshoes, clovers and blue moons, hourglass. When did that become one? Rainbows and tasty red balloons. The easier part of the challenge will be the marshmallows because I, that's something I've made before and I have some idea of how to do that. I think the bigger challenge will be the cereal part. Obviously they're not fried. They're puffed through this like industrial process that I won't be able to duplicate here. I really have no idea what these shapes are. This is an X. What is it? This is, it's like fish shaped. Each of these is about a centimeter in diameter. The inside has very, very tiny air bubbles. That's making it so light. I think as a kid, I really underestimated how good the cereal part was. I can kind of tell from the flavor and the slick exterior that they, they've been coated in probably like a sugar solution to make them a little sweet. It's just so crunchy, like there's no chew at all. Okay, marshmallows. Very clean cut. The color goes all the way through, so it's not like sprayed on the outside like it was in the Skittles. So these are marshmallows, but they're not fluffy and they're not squishy. They are, you know, totally dehydrated and dry and crisp. It smells, oh, it just smells sweet. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It just really tastes like sugar. Hey, Molly. Once I saw these in the office, there was no stopping. Well, a box disappeared. Yeah. Was found on Molly's station. station. What mm -hmm. does the gourmet version have to have to like keep that nostalgia factor and like what could we do better? I think I would just flip and reverse the ratio of marshmallows oh. to oat cereal. I was gonna try to really execute the the classic marshmallow shapes, but the cereal shape seems less important, right? Right. So yeah. what kind of shapes are you gonna make? It might be O's. Oh, okay, O's are fine. As long as uh -huh. you got something that's not just like a ball or like no, a no, no. fusilli or something. <laughs> as far as the cereal component goes, my goal is to create something that has the same lightness and crunch as the Lucky Charm cereal, maybe with a little bit more oat flavor. As far as the marshmallows, what's most important clearly is that I retain the shape and colors of the marshmallows, much more important than the cereal. Because like no one remembers the, what the cereal shapes are, but they remember the marshmallow shapes. Time to read the ingredients. Ingredients, whole grain oats, sugar, oat flour, corn syrup, modified corn starch, corn starch dextrose, salt, gelatin, gelatin phosphate, yellow five red and six, 40, blue one, natural and artificial flavor, vitamin E, parentheses, mixed, tocal close parentheses, added to preserve freshness. Vitamins and minerals. Calcium, zinc carbon, and iron, nutrients, vitamin sodium, C, A, B, vitamins, niacinamide, vitamin B6, pyridoxin, hydrochloride, riboflavin, vitamin B1, vitamin, B1, vitamin A, palmitate, AB vitamin, acid, vitamin B12, vitamin D3. Quite a lot. There's some meat on those bones. I have some some things to think about. We're gonna go over to the old YouTube and see what we can find about how these are made. I have not had sugar <laughs> breakfast cereal in so long. It's delicious, right? Oh my god, it's like drugs. Sugar is a drug. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I've talked about the show How It's Made before. Great show. <laughs> Here is a clip of an episode they had on oat cereal. So this is like kind of a jackpot. So it's making like a stiff dough, it looks like from the oat flour and like whole cooked oats. What that YouTube video showed me about the cereal is that it's made from the whole oats and wheat flour, but I'm gonna do oat flour. And then it's extruded through a dye. I had our producer order this KitchenAid pasta extruder attachment that makes all of these different pasta shapes. So I might choose one of the large macaroni dye, this one, for basically extruding little circles and then cutting them off and making those O shapes. I'm gonna use steel cut oats, which are the whole oat grain. They're really nutritious. I might grind this up even finer to kind of make like an oat flour, and then I'll cook the flour into like a porridge. This is a ghost town, right? There's no, there's nothing happening in the background. This whole episode's already gone up. It's so boring. Ready? Kind of nervous? 
Okay, no, nothing came out. Nothing's happening. How much was that? 120. Oh, we got robbed. <laughs> oh, it's happening. They all got smushed. It's not holding together. In my head, this worked perfectly. I'm switching out the dye. I'm gonna try rigatoni. I managed to cut off one little ring. It would probably be easier to do this by hand. I'm gonna go to plan B. I'm going to try punching out each individual little O. Okay, so before I waste any more time, I'm gonna try baking these off. Just to see what happens, because I'm curious, I'm going to try microwaving this one. The actual microwaves might be such a powerful heat source that it might puff them. That's what you did when you put it in there. No, nothing happened. I don't think it's gonna puff. Yeah. Fail. Okay, so the microwave one did not really puff, but it didn't explode. It mostly just dried out and got kind of hard. No, it's really bad. Fingers crossed for the ones in the oven. Okay, so these I didn't set a timer, so I don't know how long they were in the oven. They kind of just crack a little bit. They really didn't expand much at all. They're like not, not tasty at all. It's like a really bad cracker. <sighs> Texture's not right, flavor's not right. So I'm gonna take a couple days to think about how I can produce something that has that much airier, crunchier texture. And we'll come back in a couple days and definitely try out the marshmallows too. So I had some thoughts. I'm gonna make a batter that's a little bit looser and then I can dehydrate it and it will maintain its shape, but it'll just lose all the water. I'm gonna use my flour mill, my favorite tool in the whole kitchen, which I'm so excited about. It's certainly a lot finer. I'm gonna do a lot of baking powder this time. The first thing I'm gonna try is baking these. They just kinda of look a little sad and they're definitely not dry enough. They're kind of gross. I have a feeling that if I bake them and then I dehydrate them, I might really have something. These don't look too bad. Do you want to see? I, so I'm dehydrating them. <laughs> oh my god. They kind of look like cat food or something. <laughs> oh. More sugar. There's definitely vanilla in this. Taste it. This was a mistake. I The flavor <laughs> is wrong. I want to quickly kind of put together another batter because it kind of just tastes like raw oats and not a lot else. I want to toast the rest of these oats since they start to develop some flavor. Ooh, okay. Well, I feel really encouraged by this. They really don't taste that good. They are kind of gross. <laughs> I might add a little honey. Some cinnamon, vanilla extract. This has not been dehydrated, but just tasting it for flavor. It's a little tastier, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like dog food. I mean, they haven't you. been dehydrated yet. They taste them um, pretty good, but pretty different. I now have the honey simple syrup. So my hope is that this is gonna give them some of that shine. Oh, they definitely look shiny. I think that the shininess is gonna help people move beyond the association with dog food. Hey, taste them and let me know what you think. What? You hate it. It kind of tastes like dog treats. <laughs> like, you know, milk bones? <laughs> Why have you tasted that? Who hasn't eaten a milk bone? I used to watch my friend's dog, and every now and then I think of a little <laughs> Never have I ever. So like all of us that we've eaten, you're the weird one. I'm just really trying to get away from the pet food associations. Maybe what I should do is swap in just refined white sugar for the date sugar. I think I'm going to grind them a little bit finer. Why is it so liquid? I don't understand. Start over. Why is it so liquid? This looks better than wet cat food. I feed Harris's cats with wet cat food. It's really gross. My Instagram is all food. I don't really do selfies. Follow me at CSaffets. Save me. Call for help. How many does she have to make? It's definitely not worth it. <laughs> Especially when the original tastes pretty good. <laughs> and like, just have a bowl of that. Have you ever had dog food before? Yeah, I, I grew up with dogs. Told you. What is the world? <laughs> what is the world? Do you grow up with pets? 
I had a gerbil. No. It wasn't a good relationship. <laughs> I'm gonna put these in the oven, 10 minutes. Oh my God, they got so dark. Did I leave these in for too long? I kind of burned them. Did I bake off a version with the white sugar already? That's, That's why. That's why they burned. It's because of the white sugar. I'm going to taste it. Crunchy. Hmm. Kind of good. Try it. It needs to dry out more, too. It's all oat flour. What was that face? <laughs> <Yeah>. It's bitter. <laughs> I burned them, kind of. It's like on the crunchy side, not the crispy side. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the difference between crunchy and crispy? Crispy implies that there's air and it's a less right, dense right, thing. right, and right. Crunchy implies that it's a denser, like hard on your teeth. That makes thing. sense. So mm, these guys more airiness. I, I'll get rid of those. I'll take the golden ones and I'll dehydrate them and see what happens. I agree with what Delaney said. It's sort of a density issue. That I'm gonna have to figure out sort of another way to get more air into it. Maybe tomorrow I should start with the marshmallows and then I can kind of return to the idea of the cereal. So I wanna check on the cereal from yesterday. Also, it's so hot in here and I'm sweating. Do you wanna taste this real quick? This one Yeah, attempt? let's do it. It's just, I want you to know, it's not, it's wrong. Oh my God, they're so soft. Don't taste it, go away. They kinda taste like the little like, like the heads to like the gram bears, the, you know? Teddy grams. Teddy grams. I know. The problem is they turn off the air conditioning in here and then this, this thing shut off. It just took out all the moisture in the room. You know, save it for the judge, lady. Do you want a little, do you want these to go? I'll give them to the boy. Oh, for- They're pretty tasty. I like those. They're the oh my God. Ones. It actually makes me feel so much better that he's going to feed this to his child. Have a good weekend. Thanks, you too. I'm not even going to attempt natural food coloring for these because just look at them. They're like pretty much fluorescent, so I have to pick my battles and that's not one of them. I have this particular meringue recipe committed to memory. But we're just going to go with these classic shapes. I'm skipping the hourglass. Good enough. So blue is on the top, yellow in the middle, and then pink on the bottom. So I'll have to make the rainbows like that. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I'm about to cry. Oh, really? <laughs> so some of these worked out better than others. All in all, like not, not terrible. Almost indistinguishable when you eat them. I think I just want to kind of get them continue to dry out in the dehydrator. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to the cereal. My idea is to mix a fairly loose batter, make a stiff meringue, fold that in, smooth it onto a half sheet tray, and bake it that way. I don't love how it cracked. It doesn't taste bad at all. What you get is kind of that nice toasted oat flavor. These are better. <laughs> These taste better. Color-wise, right? Spot on. You know, I could take them and then punch them out like this, stick them in the dehydrator and see what happens. Ugh, okay. Finally, I'm done punching out my, my, my forefinger kind of hurts. It smells like honey. Ooh, the marshmallows are so dry. Look at that, so dry. Mm. Can we try it? <laughs> they really um, shrunk quite a bit in size. They're really crunchy. Delicious. I made Lucky Charms. But there's no one here to pat me on the back. Sucks. All right, should I, I'll try the originals first. These are delightful. They all like immediately dissolve. The marshmallows hold up well. Okay. Don't tell anyone, but I think I'm gonna have the, the other test kitchen people taste them dry. They don't have to have it with milk, right? Right? No one said this had, to, had milk on it, right? My frustration and exhaustion from Friday, that turned into now sort of like appreciation at the chance to do it one more time. The milk was soaking into all of those air bubbles and crevices. I have to pipe them all out individually, make like a powdered sugar glaze. It'll add sweetness and it'll also add like a protective barrier between the cereal and the milk. Hey, 
Oh god, I must <laughs> All right. So I feel like I have to tell people that like the cereal part is not gonna look like the cereal part. And then the marshmallows, have you seen the marshmallows? Oh my goodness. <gasps> I just went with right, good old, wow. I went with good old food coloring on these. I should have put parchment down because now they're all stuck. Cool. See if I can, as Edna Turnblatt says, negotiate the pleats. Hairspray? No. Anyone? <laughs> The marshmallow really coats the tongue in a way. Uh huh. And yet the lingering of um, chemical food coloring. It's really quite something. There you go. Yeah. Mm. There's something very light and airy about this cereal part. I conspicuously, it did not give you milk because <laughs> the second it touches milk, they dissolve. Does it kind of do the same thing that Lucky Charms does? It's better. Yeah? Yeah. You don't seem totally. I think these are pretty delicious. Oh, thank you. These are not as sweet and flavorful as I wish they were. Well, I think it's the job very well done. Thank you. You know what these remind me of? Remember that cereal? I'm so glad you didn't say dog food. <laughs> but remember the cereal where it was like little chocolate chip cookies? And the dog was like... Yeah, what were, what were those called? And it was like uh, Dunk... Um, cookies. Co cookie crisps. That's what they were. So what's this? That's a balloon. A red nailed balloon. it. I think you nailed these. Thanks. Let's try the cereal. It's mm -hmm. not reminding me of a milk bone. It's the closest you've been. Uh-huh. Other than, you know, what, they got some cool little, uh, more like shapes and I know, stuff like I know. That. I didn't really even attempt the shapes. I'm not doing it anymore. You hear that? No more. We're human, Claire. I know. Okay? I know. All right, we're not, this isn't million dollar machines making this. It's human beings. It's one human being. I think you did a good job. Thanks. All right, keep fighting the good fight. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think overall I did a pretty good job. So I'm I'm pretty pleased with myself. Ish. Here's how you make gourmet Lucky Charms. Start by combining one cup freshly milled toasted oat flour, one and a half teaspoons baking soda, and one teaspoon kosher salt in a medium bowl. Stir in two thirds cup water and with a splash of vanilla extract and stir until smooth. Let rest 10 minutes. Whip 100 grams egg whites until foamy, then add a pinch of salt. Start streaming in 100 grams granulated sugar gradually. Whip until peaks form, then beat in a capful of white vinegar. Pipe at one centimeter circles onto a parchment lined baking sheet and bake in a 300 oven until cereal is dry and crisp 15 to 20 minutes. Move from parchment and transfer cereal to a dehydrator. Halfway through drying, spray with a glaze made from a half a cup powdered sugar, seven teaspoons milk, and a splash of vanilla. Let dehydrate completely. Meanwhile, whip 200 grams of egg whites in an electric mixer until foamy. Add a pinch of salt, then when soft peaks form, start streaming in 200 grams granulated sugar gradually. Beat in 200 grams powdered sugar, followed by two capsules of white vinegar. Divide meringue into seven bowls and add a different color of gel food coloring to each bowl until you reach the desired color. Transfer your meringue to piping bags fitted with couplers and different pastry tips and pipe out marshmallow shapes onto parchment lined baking sheets. Bake in a 200 degree oven until marshmallows are dry, then transfer to a dehydrator and let dry until crisp all the way through. Toss with cereal. If there's a uh, snack food or candy or convenience food that you love that you want to see recreated here in the test kitchen, feel free to leave it in the comments after the video. But please, for the love of God, no puffed things of any kind. Come back again for the next one. I'll be probably right here. <laughs>